Hey, what's up everybody? So today I am going to do a quick review and um, tutorial on Google Webmaster Tools. Recently, a couple of weeks ago, Google rolled out their new Webmaster Tools. As you know, this is the name we have known this tool for the last couple of years, but now they call it the Search Console. So what's it all about? Well, this tool is the new name for Google Webmaster Tools. And as you know, Google Webmaster Tools is the exclusive SEO tool for Google. Here, you can find really valuable information on the search information on your website. Okay, so I wanna switch languages here to English so you can check it better. And here are some of my websites. So let's check my main website. As you can see, I don't have much traffic because I have been so busy at work that I haven't really um, worked on my on my traffic acquisition. But it's uh, a lot of valuable information on how people are finding my my website. I can toggle within all my sites here, or I can just type the name. Okay, click here so I can toggle within my websites. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna, cho I'm gonna focus on this one, which is one of my main blogs. I haven't blogged in a couple months, but um, I have really worked on this one for more than four years, all right? So Google has um, refurbished and restyled their whole uh, Google Webmaster Tools menu. Now uh, they have different names for everything. So now it's search appearance, search traffic, Google index, and the crawl. It's all information about how people are finding you in Google. So with the structured data, it's basically all the metadata that you are using in microformats that show the way you look on a search. So for example, if I search Google Webmaster Tools, the metadata is basically this structured data. Visible URL, the description, and the site links. And here you can see a lot of stuff. So for example, if I search keywords on how people find me, So this is the way I look. This is my title. This is my visible URL and my description. This is the way I really wanted my blog to look like. And I'm covering the first three positions on Google, which is what, which was one of my objectives. So here I have uh, 61 micro for formats, so we can check them out. And these are the micro formats of all my URLs, or most of them, the ones that have structured data. So this is the title. This is the entry, uh, the item type, and the author name. So we're gonna do a test. Well, it's not working somehow. Gotta check it out. URL is not a 404. This is the URL. And this is the way it's showing up. <coughs> okay. Let's see the data highlighter. This one is also a new a new feature that helps you highlight information. Okay, the most important thing I use with Google is basically the search traffic. I don't really focus on this ones here because sometimes the requirements to add uh, micro formats are technically a little bit difficult to add to your website. 
and they don't really uh, improve your search appearance. But the thing you should work more is on the keywords that you're going to use and your strategy, your search strategy to build content. So let's go to search traffic. I'll explain later these points, but I think the most important thing we should cover is the search traffic. Here we can see the search analytics and the new interface is a little bit different from before, but it shows you the queries, you know, the times that people are typing these keywords and your link is appearing on the result page. So for example here, if I type inflation essay, there is a big chance I might appear on a high position. Let's click here and see what's about the position. It's on the first page on the 7.4 position. Let's check it out. <clears throat> so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm trying to find the link to my website from the webmaster. Okay, so here I am in the twelfth position. The Google Webmaster Tools or the Search Console actually tells me an average position, which is a 7.4. This means that on, on most or in the average searches, I am showing on the first page on the lower fold. Let's, let's try to find a better one. Current events in society. So let's type like this keyword which is in the first position, current events in society. So I'm showing on the first page and on the first position. So this is pretty cool because I actually optimized this page to be on the first position. But the thing is that this is such a long tail and not a very popular long-term uh, keyword that I'm just getting 10 clicks a month. This is very little traffic for my website. Also, maturing candidate. This is another very specific topic. And not many people search on the internet. And this is the reason why I am just getting 22 clicks for this one. I'm not getting massive traffic because I am using, you know, very unusual and uh, not very popular terms. Uh, but the cool thing is that I'm reaching high positions on these terms, which means I am dominating this topic. Well, they are not technically very complicated. There are actual uh, key phrases that we use, you know, normally. But actually, on the internet, people don't tend to search this kind of stuff. So this is the reason why you know my website has very low traffic. This is not actual traffic, but it's very. It's very similar to what I'm getting in analytics. So let's go to analytics. So what I did, I have my website tagged with analytics. I use Ghostery to check my to check my um, tags. And I can see that I have Google Analytics. This is because I added this one through a plugin. I use WordPress and I add this one through a plugin. I'm logging now into Analytics. I'm going to show you how it works. All right, so let's go to the website. So I'm getting 641 visits. Google Webmaster Tools tell, tell me around 400 visits. Well, this means that 641 visits are coming from, from SEO, from social media, from direct traffic, bookmarks, and referrals. I have a couple of links in YouTube and that traffic doesn't really show here. These are queries that people are typing in Google. It's not necessarily referral traffic. So let's see how I am acquiring this traffic. All right, so as you can see here, my organic traffic is 447. 
very close to the traffic that the search console is telling me. It's about 400 clicks. Here, it's 447 sessions. It's very close. I'm getting 100 uh, visits through a referral. These are links in blogs and YouTube and 84 direct visits. People are actually typing the URL on the internet or using some kind of bookmarks. Uh, I'm kind of surprised because I haven't really uploaded any content recently, but I'm getting 84 visits. Let's see where these people are coming from. Right, so most of my traffic is coming from the United States, Brazil, and the UK. I wonder what people from Brazil are reading. So, to know that, I just go to behavior, and then I see the site content. And then I break it down on... Uh, the dimension, which is the acquisition, oh, sorry, the behavior, well, I don't know what it's not showing here, traffic type, no, okay, so I have to go to user. So people from Brazil are actually finding my homepage and the this URL. So this tells me that people are getting to my website searching about Obama and society current events. They're staying very little time. It's about three minutes. Well, so by analyzing the way people you acquire traffic through organic you know exactly what how people are finding your blog and from here you can expand on a content strategy that can help you develop content that can expand this traffic and make people return to your blog but in my case i just wrote this article which is my main article that's driving more traffic randomly i just watched a movie and documentary by alex jones and i thought it was interesting to to write about it so i'm going to show you what this article is about so i go here i click here and this is what the article is about so it's basically um, it's basically quoting a couple of documentaries that talk about Barack Obama uh, being a Manchurian candidate. This is just conspiracy theories people are interested, and this is a topic that uh, Alex Jones, um, famous Texan uh, American conspiracy theorist, brought up. And there are a couple of people that have followed that uh, rhetoric, like John Pilger and Webster Tarpley. These are, these are journalists and historians that are very critical on Obama's government. This was a completely random topic that really uh, pick, picked up on the internet with my blog. And as you can see, most of the clicks come from related keywords. But actually, I really wanted to have a blog critical thinking and and nuclear energy but those topics are not really driving traffic and one of the reasons is that actually nuclear energy is not a very popular traffic I'm gonna show you how or I'm gonna show you why so for me to understand what people are really looking for I use keyword planner as you can see here this is a tool that Google offers for free that helps you research, you know, the traffic that you will get with keywords. So I'm going to type nuclear energy. 
I'm not going to type landing page because I want to know the general searches on this term. And I'm not going to type a category. I'm going to use all locations and language in English. So I'm going to see how much traffic I'm getting with nuclear energy. So as you can see, uh, Google does a search and it clusters this keyword term into categories like this ones. But I really want to know how much traffic does nuclear energy is generating. Seven, 74,000 visits worldwide. It's not that many and it's and because it's a very general topic, I cannot write solely on nuclear energy. So in my case, I'm, write, I'm writing more about renewable energies and, and the benefits of nuclear energy or the cons of nuclear energy. So as you can see, they don't drive that much traffic. So my blog is just getting a fraction of this global traffic in English, which is very little. But if I type Barack Obama, for example, which is one of the keywords in my key phrase, you will see how much traffic. Barack Obama, just a keyword, is bringing 1 million searches. And Barack Obama, Manchurian candidate. This is bringing 30 searches a month which I guess it's all the searches I am getting from my blog, okay? So the keyword planner uh, gives you a rough idea of how much traffic you would drive from a keyword. I am using a keyword with very low competition, a keyword that not many people are using, but the problem is that it doesn't really drive traffic, which means it's not a profitable keyword. The cool thing is that I'm not competing against anyone and I can get all the traffic. But the problem is that this keyword is not really profitable. A handful of people are searching a month on this keyword. But I really wanted to drive traffic with nuclear energy because it can bring me a traffic a portion of 74,000 visits um, a month. <coughs> Sorry. Unfortunately, um, I am just getting a fraction of this traffic. Why? Because the competition here is higher. Probably more blogs, more stuff written about nuclear energy. I show you. So if I type nuclear energy, there are 35 million results. If I type Barack Obama, there is only 108,000 results. Meaning that here I have a ton of competition and it's very difficult to find high positions here. Probably with nuclear energy, my blog would show up in a very low position. You see? I'm not even showing up. Hold on. Oh, I'm not even showing up with nuclear energy. So, in spite, I have a the keyword throughout my home page, I am not showing up. So, you know, every time I, I dive into the search console, into Webmaster Tools, I find out a lot of stuff that I didn't know before. I get new insights on the keywords I have to work on. In my case, type, working on energy is not really the strategy. I have to focus on other stuff that my blog is helping me. I have actually two options. I can continue working on nuclear energy and make my blog more popular, you know, not become solely dependent 
on SEO traffic, but also work social media and advertising to get more traffic. I can work, you know, all the channels and empower the organic traffic, but that might take me a lot of work. So what I do, I just drive the wave. So basically the wave and tides are telling me that people are focusing on these topics. So what I can do is focus more on current events in society, which is more daily news, um, uh, political news that are happening, you know, uh, events on on more current culture and all that stuff that I could write more often because I can see that the first and second page mostly talk and mostly show me keywords that are related to this conspiracy theories are also very popular although they are not profitable they bring uh, traffic to my website Okay, so the links to my site shows me the backlinks that are driving traffic to my website. So WordPress.com, I got a thousand links, but this is not a legitimate, le legitimate link. Actually, what I did in forums, when I have an issue with my WordPress blog, I paste the link of uh, the page where I had the problem. And that page links, you know, to my website. Also here, I don't really know what this is. This might be a, an automatic directory where my link is there. And this is actually uh, an energy website. Here I have 27 links. Well, I'm actually linked to, I have a, th you know, 1,308 links, but basically 1,000 of them are not really valid because people in WordPress are not actually looking for um, current event news, nuclear energy. These people are looking after support. And my blog is nothing to do with that. My most linked content are these ones. Of course, my main domain is linking in WordPress because I always paste the main domain every time I have an issue. And these are the other links that are probably linked from blogs and directories. These are the internal links. I have a ton of them. Manual actions, stuff. If you have problems, web spam, you know, toxic pages linked to you, you could actually request Google to remove the indexation from from those pages and it actually works international targeting I don't have anything because I actually want my website to show up in every country if you're using HRF lang that means that you're localizing your content into a specific country and language so for example if you are an online store that only ships to America you want to have that HRF lang tag that links to your country, region, United States, and to the language in English. Because you don't want people in the United States or people in the UK to visit your page and then find out that they cannot buy stuff because it only ships into America. You know, that, only, that also happens with news outlets and with other blogs that are with more localized content. The mobile usability, this is a new feature that actually shows um, all the problems of your website in mobile. Fortunately, my website is responsive, so I have zero, um, zero uh, usability issues. So as you can see, it's responsive. I'm using, I'm using the the inspector here to check that my website is actually responsive and it works perfectly. That This is the reason why I have no issues. If you have a website that's not responsive, you'll get all the recommendations and uh, errors here. The problem is that after 
uh, April 21st this year, Google uh, started working on a new algorithm that gave a paste page rank in mobile usability. So in case your website um, had really good, you know, high position and high ranked content uh, in mobile search, but your website was not mobile, Google will start uh, lowering your positions because they find that your website is actually not usable in a mobile device, meaning that your fonts are too small, that your resolution is too high, that, um, that your sorry, that your resolution is not adaptive, that your images are too big, and that your content is very difficult to work on and interactive. Buttons are too small, and all this stuff that you encounter with pages that are not responsive, are not or are not built for mobile. In my case, I have a responsive website that adapts to the resolution of any device. So the Google index shows me um, how many of my pages are indexed. So far, I have all my URLs indexed. The content keywords that are indexed in my contents are nuclear because I used this keyword a lot in my content because I wanted to position with this keyword. Not that I'm a nuclear scientist, but I was really interested in the copy and in the topic after the Fukushima disaster that I started writing about it. And here you find all the keywords that I'm using that are actually indexing my content. Blocked resources, no blocked resources through robots. Dot txt and no removed URLs because I haven't requested any removals from the Google index. With the crawl errors I can see how Google has encountered my website. As you can see my website in terms of SEO it's technically very sound but the problem is my content is not popular enough and I'm not really driving traffic. This is the crawl stats. Now, this is, these are the times that Google comes to visit my page. So in the last couple of months, is it has found out that I haven't had any changes. So that's not really good. Robots TXT. I have the typical uh, WordPress uh, necessary lines of code and some of the lines of code that some of my plugins need and my sitemaps. These ones are generated through a plugin that I have. Here it's showing me an alert. One error. It's probably a URL that's giving me problems. Yeah. But in general, my content, it's working fine. Um, I have 621 submitted URLs and 550 are indexed. No errors, just warnings. I have to check it out later. URL parameters, I don't really use this feature. Security issues, I haven't used this one either because I haven't been hacked so far. And these are all the resources and data you can, information you can read to find out more about your webmaster tools so let's go back to the dashboard and have like a final review of everything you can you have here okay so basically what you're looking after with webmaster tools is that you want to make sure that google is really finding your page and it's understanding what's it what it's all about because organic traffic as i showed you here is a huge chunk of your traffic so in my case, the organic traffic, it's 69.7, almost 70% of my traffic, two thirds of my traffic, it's from Google. So I have to make sure that people are really finding my page so with what I really want them to find my page, with the keywords I'm interested in, you know, and with the URLs, I want them to, uh, 
link my content and I also want to find out that I have no errors and that Google is really crawling my website with any problems. So when you log in here, you find out the alerts and the warnings, and then you can tackle them. I haven't logged in here for a couple of weeks. I have found this ones, and I'll tackle them today. Okay, so this is about it. This is basically the main, uh, the main. These I went over the main features of Google Webmaster Tools. In case you have any questions, drop me a line, send me, write me a comment, or send me an email. Okay, so thank you for watching and see you next time.